Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is one in a playlist on probability distributions. The playlist is planned to include a three-part series on distributions as a whole, plus individual videos on nine different types of distributions, as well as several on the properties of distributions. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of this work. You may find it helpful to view the first two videos before viewing this one, but that is not required. As usual, in the book, and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding or KTUs. This is to give you the overall picture of the concept on one page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. The first key to understanding tells us that T is a test statistic used in tests involving the difference between two means. KTU number two shows a descriptive formula for T. T is the difference between two means divided by the standard error. The third key to understanding tells us that T is a measure of how likely it is that the difference between the two means is statistically significant. Key to understanding number four says there is not just one T distribution but there is a different t distribution for each value of the degrees of freedom, df. As df grows larger, the t distribution approaches the z, the standard normal distribution. And the final KTU states t has a number of similarities to z and some key differences. And here, on one page, are all five keys to understanding the concept of t the test statistic and its distributions. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, now let's take a little more detailed look at each key to understanding. KTU number one starts out by saying that T is a test statistic. But what is a test statistic? First of all, a statistic is a numerical property of a sample like the mean or standard deviation. A test statistic is one that has an associated probability distribution or an associated family of probability distributions. With this distribution or distributions, given any value of the test statistic, we can determine the probability of that value. More importantly, we know the cumulative probability of all values greater than or less than that particular value. This is an essential part of inferential statistics in which we estimate or infer a parameter, for example, the mean or, stand devi or standard deviation of a population or process based on a corresponding statistic from a sample. Common test statistics are T, Z, F, and chi-square. There is a separate chapter in the book and a separate video on the concept of test statistic. We'll have more on the T di distributions in KTU number four. The second part of KTU number one says that T is used in tests involving the difference between two means. There are three common t-tests. The one sample t-test, the two sample t-test, also known as the independent samples t-test, and the paired t-test, also known as the dependent samples t-test. These are described in detail in separate chapters in the book and in separate videos. But as you can see in the table, each test has a different set of the two means whose difference is being statistically analyzed. You may want to pause the video here to read the table. Here is a descriptive generic formula for T. T is the difference between two means divided by the standard error. The numerator is straightforward enough, but what is the standard error? Standard error is a measure of variation of the samples. See the standard error article in the book or the upcoming video for more information. 
Now, different t-tests have different formulas for the standard error, but a generic formula for standard error can be stated as standard error equals s divided by the square root of n, where s is the standard deviation of the sample and n is the sample size. Since standard error is in the denominator of the formula for t, the square root of n is in the denominator of the denominator. Let's simplify the formula with simple algebra, and we get t equals the difference between two means times the square root of n divided by s. t is the difference between the two means times the square root of the sample size divided by the standard deviation. The third key to understanding says, t is a measure of how likely it is that a difference in means is statistically significant. As with all test statistics, we compare t to its critical value in a statistical test. The value of t is calculated from sample data, as shown in the formulas on earlier slides. The value of t critical is determined by the value selected for alpha, the significance level, and the appropriate t distribution. A large value for t makes it more likely that more likely to be larger than, the t, than t critical, and so makes it more likely that there is a statistically significant difference in the means. Since the difference between the means and the sample size n is in the numerator, the larger value, values for each either of these would make t larger. Since it's actually the square root of n that is in the numerator, an increase in the difference between the means would have a much more of an effect than a proportional increase in the sample size. And since the standard deviation is in the denominator, a larger variation in the samples will make t smaller. This is all summarized in the graphic. A larger difference between the means means a larger t, which, which makes it more likely that the difference is statistically significant. A larger sample size also means a larger t, which makes it more likely that the difference is statistically significant. And a larger sample standard deviation means a smaller t, which means it less likely that the difference is statistically significant. Now, some authors say the t is a measure of how good the sample is or how, how accurate the sample is in estimating the population or process mean. But it's probably more precise to say that t is a measure of how likely it is that a difference in means is statistically significant. Key to understanding number four says, there is not just one t-distribution, but a different t-distribution for each value of the degrees of freedom, df. As df grows larger, the t-distribution approaches the z, which is the standard normal distribution. T-distributions have a bell-shaped curve similar to the normal distribution. For smaller sample size, the t-distribution is noticeably wider than the normal. However, as the sample size grows larger, the t-distributions grow narrower. For a single sample, df equals n minus 1, where n is the sample size. For other situations, it gets more complicated. For example, in the two-sample t-test, degrees of freedom equals n sub 1 plus n sub 2 minus 2. A t-distribution is like a z standard normal distribution, which has been modified to account for the increase in variation due to being sample-based. It stands to reason that the smaller the sample, the less likely it is to accurately depict the population or process. So the standard deviation of a t-distribution for a small sample is larger than that for a large sample. The distribution curve for a small sample would be spread wider than for the larger sample. KTU number 5 states that the test statistics T and Z have a number of similarities and differences. These are illustrated in this compare and contrast table. First, they are both test statistics. Secondly, their probability distributions are similarly bell-shaped and symmetrical, and they never touch the horizontal axis. The first difference is that Z has one distribution, the standard normal distribution, while t has a different distribution for each value of degrees of freedom. Now we are familiar with thinking of degrees of freedom as being n minus 1, but t has different formulas for degrees of freedom for each of the three different types of t-tests. More on this in the upcoming videos on t-tests. The probability distributions of both z and t are centered on zero, 
and z's standard normal distribution has a standard deviation of 1, the standard deviation of all t distributions are greater than 1 with larger sample sizes bringing it closer to 1. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of t distribution, the t test and t distribution. If you like this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. Now I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open, exam, open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd also recommend following my blog at statisticsfromaz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you'll find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.